guys, it's the captain here for a very exciting uh, episode of Anderson's TV. Glad you're excited. I am excited because not only am I about to uh, build a pedal board for myself, I've only gone and recruited possibly the world's finest pedal board maker <laughs> and electronics whiz ever, uh, uh, Mr. Dan Steinhardt from uh, the Gig Rig and That Pedal Show fame. Oh, cheers, buddy. Thanks so, for having me. My pedal life mm -hmm. has been one of um, excitement. No, and, and predominantly going uh, as long as I've got an amp with reverb in it, mm -hmm. a distortion pedal or a drive pedal that kind of gives me a sound I like, mm -hmm. and the option to put in some echo, which invariably people then say, "Can you turn that off, please? Because it's making everything too mushy." I'm kind of happy, right? But you know, as Perhaps I've just watched too many episodes of TPS. Maybe, I feel, maybe. I feel like I'm sort of missing out. So I've, I've I've gone a bit crazy and gone and bought one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about eleven pedals. Okay, uh, uh, right, brilliant. And um, and Dan very kindly offered to come and wire it all up for me and possibly introduce me to some gig rid wizardry. Okay, yeah, which I was the... not expecting. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look at the pedals. Okay. And then, uh, you know. Well, I start. First of all, I chose a board by the lovely people at Pedal Deck, made in England. I chose this one. <laughs> Can't say the word Pedal Deck without uh, Pete laughing. No, um, it's you say it. Pedal Deck. Because your Antipodean accent uh, makes it sound. So I like these because I like the fact that there's a little bit more space underneath than perhaps on some of their other contemporaries. Mm -hmm. um, it comes with all the brackets included in the price um, and it's all folded metal as opposed to welded. So it it's, does look rock and roll. So it it's a bit rock and roll and they're, and they're cheap as well. So I got this and then the very first message that Dan sent me back was, I don't think that board's going to be big enough, mate. So fortunately, <laughs> they do a bigger size, um, which is here. So one or other of these boards is going to be what we end up with. Okay. But I don't know which one yet. If we can fit everything on the smaller one, we may. I think we're in with a shout with that. You mentioned something to do with the wire. So we'll, yes, we'll get there. That's, that's so, the big question. Um, in every particular order, I'm guessing that every good guitar player needs to be in tune. Yes. So I, that's not going to work, is it? So <laughs> let's get rid of the board. So I'm guessing, and polytune to, does what it says on the tin and is very small. Mm -hmm. Is that acceptable? Fine. Am I still yep. TPS worthy? Yes, you're, okay. you're on Excellent. track. I just got to check these things. I was going to um, try and open these cookies quietly. You can't There's do no it, can you? There's no way to open it quietly, so I'm just going to have to do it do on, it on camera. camera. Share them out. Yeah. Actually, no, I can't eat and do video at the same time, but... Mm. What are they? That Oreos. Oreo peanut butters. Oh. Yeah. There'll, be some, there'll be some light crunching. What's the difference? These are different to the white cream ones, yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. Just what a man with two decks needs. That's a naughty biscuit. Yeah. Never owned a wah. I probably have owned a wah, but never consist really? never really consistently used a wah. Right. Um, absolutely all my favourite guitar players get great sounds using wah wah pedals. Okay. So this, this is a fantastic bar. I'm well really I tried nice. all the ones that we had in the shop mm -hmm. the other day. Um, and this one had way more bass end than right. all the other ones. Mm -hmm which I really, really liked in isolation. Mm -hmm. may, or not, may or may not be the greatest wah-wah for, you know, cutting through a lead mix, but I loved that. Really good sounding wah-wah, so hopefully that's it. Loads of switches, mm -hmm. which when I kind of laid out the pedal board, I felt, oh, I'm not gonna be able to actually get to any of these, which is why we've got two, potentially killing two birds with one stone. If we don't have the wah-wah on the board. Here's the thing with the wah pedal being off the board. And loads of boards um, that we're doing now for people are choosing to have the wire pedal off the board for two reasons. One, with the wire pedal on the board, it, I mean, it's a big unit. It mm. takes up a lot of space. Here's, here's my main issue with the wire being on the board, is the angle of your foot yeah. when the wire is on the board like that. It's, it's actually uncomfortable to play. It's designed right. to already be, you know, so, so when it's forward like that, your foot is flat, yep, and yep. here your heel is back. Also, a wire pedal takes very little amount of current, mm. so a battery in here is going to last a long time. With it off the board, um, you're going to fit so much more on there, and it's really easy to set that up 
And so, and loads of guys also like it on a little bit of an angle. Mm -hmm. So you've got heaps of space here. Use that as your guitar input. Yeah. And then from here into the board. The other thing is because you have to step on this anyway to operate it. Yes. You know what I mean? So yeah. um, I, that makes I, a lot of sense. And also, if you're doing something where you're not going to use the wah, you just, you have the board. Yeah. You know? No, I, do you know what? I think that's an absolute, that's the correct decision. Uh, I mean, I... I vaguely mucked around with these red switches on the side. And They're really one, great. One does a boost and the other one does two different kinds of wah. So yeah. anyway, that's the custom yep. audio something. Custom yep. audio electronics something yep. by Dunlop. That then, I'm guessing now we're going into drives. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we'll take that off again. I have four drive pedals because nice. when Chris Buck comes to town and his board's got like 35 drive pedals on it, um, I'm always very jealous. I have <laughs> drive envy. Right. I'm looking out for my buddy Pete here. There you go. Flying the flag for Denmark. It is. It's a fantastic sounding thing. We had Pete was on the show with this, and uh, yeah, both Mick and I were like, yeah. "Hello, ladies." It was really, really good. Yeah. So I absolutely love this. I love the fact that it's low gain, but without losing the bass end. Yep. And that it's got a boost. Uh, with end. a controllable bass mm -hmm. in as well. Mm -hmm. so you don't ha you can do the EP boost thing if you want and right. really fatten the sound up. Yep. Or you can just have it as like almost tube screamery kind of yeah, boost. Yeah, it's anyway, yep. that's that. Um, my pedal board, you'll have to take the Velcro on this because in my naive days, I put the Velcro on the wrong way around <laughs> on my last board. I I tried, mm -hmm. you know what? You know, sometimes you just have to change pedals because it's like a different day of the week yes. and you have to change pedals because you've had this. I've had this for years and years and years. I tried really hard to find something to, to, to sort that. of do this mm. job that was just different just for the sake of it being different. And I, and, I, and I just ended up going, you know what? I just like that one. I like that one great. So that's, and that I tend to use in isolation because this doesn't stack terribly well. It's, it's okay. There's loads and loads of gain in here. So it's sure. not a real stacker. Um, more recently, Mason from uh, Vertex was here and we were playing with his pedals. And in the course of the demo, I played the Ultraphonics. It's a different kind of drive sound mm -hmm. to either of the other two. Mm -hmm. It sounded amazing. Mm -hmm. And this into this did make orgasmic tones. Oh, cool. Okay. So that was nice. Mm -hmm. uh, this I want on the board, actually not because I've necessarily used it a lot within uh, this context or necessarily found a particular stack that works. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's uh, the Zach from Mythos makes a clone clone called the Mjolnir. Right. And it's just great and it's small and it does, it does do the clone thing in a really little okay. package. Can I suggest a position? Please. There At the very go. end of the drive chain. It's like Friday night in the Steinhut family, isn't it? <laughs> Can I suggest a position? <laughs> yes, please, Mr. Steinhardt. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, we found the level. Um, so, so we're going last. You see, I would not have put it there. Well, here's the thing. You've got a boost here that's mm -hmm. already boosting the front end of this. Yes. Right? And then you, uh, also you're stacking, the, you know, here into here. So you've got, you've got plenty of sort of gain stages stacking into the this part of the drive. Yeah. You've also got the plimsoll here, which you say you don't, you know, it doesn't stack well with others. The great thing about a clon type circuit is plenty of top end and mm -hmm. mids, but using it as a as a booster yeah. after gain section. So if you're um, you know, you want to kick on it for a solo, what it will do, it'll tame the bottom end, mm -hmm. push the mids and tops, and so it'll give you lift and cut for solos. So in that context you know, turning the gain yeah, right down and down quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can give it a little bit of love, but as a boost, in a boost context, yeah. the gain you know quite low, and then set it setting the output so that you know when you put it on after here, you're not adding gain to the front. You're simply yeah. taking that sound and boosting it because there's quite a lot of headroom. I at like the input. this as well because I know that I'll end up using this board in. All very all types of different demos. Sure. Yep. And absolutely, if there's an amp with gain in it already, that again, just yeah, yeah, in isolation yeah. into that is going to be magic. Perfect. Lovely. Here's a curveball, uh, and actually will will get swapped out relatively soon. I, I I'm not a big modulation 
fan. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a fan of hearing other guitar players use modulation, but mm -hmm. I just never seem to use it much myself. The Univibe is the only kind of modulated effect that I think I kind of go, oh, you know what, it does do a thing and it's... Uh... Anyway, sure. so I tried loads of Univibes mm -hmm. and I actually did, I think I did the test in the kind of right way. I didn't know anything about the pedals in the sense of which ones were analog, which ones were digital, sure. which ones had photo cells, what, anything. Mm -hmm. I, and I just tried them all. And the two I narrowed it down to were the Supro Tremolo, mm -hmm. which I didn't even realize was a vibe, but it seems to be it's a, a harmonic unit. tremolo so different to a vibe um a harmonic tremolo a normal tremolo mm -hmm. you're you're um modulating the amplitude of the mm -hmm. signal so it's, it's it's loud quiet loud quiet yeah a harmonic tremolo uh, something that's found in the old um, 60s brown face amplifiers from fender is basically they separate the bass frequencies from the treble frequencies and they modulate them differently mm -hmm. so what you get it's the same th it's a similar sort of sound to the vibe where it's that Wow, wow. It's the same thing with the harmonic tremolo. Yeah. But then, and obviously where that, where that crossover point is, um, but that's what's going on in the harmonic yeah. tremolo. And it's such a spectacular sound. Yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing sound. Mm. Um, but I just found there was, I could only get sounds that I liked out of that pedal between like nine o'clock and 10 o'clock okay. on, on one of the knobs. And I just, I just went, I don't know. And then I would plug this in because it's got a one of the sides, so this is the, the Keeley Dark side, mm -hmm. so this side does fuzz, and this side does a whole, it can do delay, flange, vibe, whatever. And I just liked the Univibe sound of this. Mm -hmm. um, and then I Facebooked uh, the guys at Keeley, mm -hmm. and it's just a little bit of a dilemma here. My favorite Univibe is this, but yeah, I, don't, I don't really use fuzz, and I don't want all the other effects and everything like that. Uh, can you help? And they they were just like, man, we live for this. It's like, send us 100%. We'll make you the pedal. And do you want to send us the graphics? And what do you want to call it? And I was like, cool. <laughs> um, so at some point over the next month or so, hopefully, a uh, just the Univibe bit from it. I did oh, ask okay. them if they could kind of do anything to do that slight gainy kind of sound that's in the Supro. Right. Uh, and they said it's not. Because this is a, this is a digital pedal, they mm -hmm. just said it's not within the whatever the DSP to do sure. that kind of game. They have so to have a preamp. Yeah, so you know that. what? That's yeah. fine. This I, I genuinely, genuinely, I tried all the Univibes in the cabinet, and that was my favourite. Look, Robert Keeley mm. is one of my favourite people. Mm. He is a genius. Um, he really, really knows his stuff mm. microscopically. You yeah. know, so you know. If anything, the only the only criticism I've of the, the uh, he doesn't do a lot of these pedals on their own separately. Yeah, I guess yeah, that's yeah. a that's a that's a criticism of a lot of digital stuff because effectively the same DSP chip can do six different effects. Of course. So like, yeah, yeah, why yeah. not put six different effects yeah, in? Yeah. But I'm just like, no, I only want one. So anyway, that's coming. Yep. Should be awesome. Then, um, and actually, now you can help me here, Dan. Okay. Aesthetically, mm -hmm. obviously, version two retains the sort of black kind of vibe that's going on on the pedal board here. Yeah. <laughs> but the problem with version two is uh, the light to tell you whether it's on or off is um, ambiguous. Not ambiguous. <laughs> okay. It's just, it just doesn't, it, it flashes with the tap tempo mm -hmm. even when it's off. And okay. it's very off putting to know whether, you know, you go, you, it, it's not easy to look straight at it and go, is sure. it on or off? And I think it's better on these because the knobs light up a certain color. Yep. But anyway, one, either one of those, I don't really mind. I really like the fact that I've got, I probably won't do presets. I will probably just literally find sure. the one delay sound that I like, but then mm -hmm. I can tap tempo in, but it does have um, a, a mix of tape and digital uh, emulated effects in here. So yep. either one of these delay pedals. Okay. And then, actually no, not quite then. In my opinion, the undisputed, if you just want a reverb pedal that sounds like the reverb that's in a Fender amplifier. Nice. Okay. That's the one. Okay. By a company called Mr. Black, owned by a bloke called Jack, but it's not Jack Black. Right. I guess the name of it is The Gag. Okay. Uh, and there is a version of this, if you really want it, that has got the shimmer on it, which I didn't really want, but this sounds absolutely great. So normally my amp would have reverb in it. Mm-hmm. 
And actually, you know, the reverb in this is so good, I might even just start to turn the reverb off on the amplifiers. But whatever, if, if this is more for when I haven't got reverb, I know I've got a pedal if I want it. It's really funny. I've started doing that, I've, especially for heavier rock sounds. Mm -hmm. I'm finding even just having a small bit of the reverb in the amp is too much. Right. So by having it off and having the reverb on the board, it's, it's so much more control. Yeah. So with, with it off and just the gain pedal in the front, yeah. it's quick and really punchy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really like that idea. I. I think, um, so these, the clockwork delays are really like GFI stuff. They make a reverb called the Specular Tempest, mm -hmm. which is also just beautiful. I think because you've got plenty of black here, but then you've got the gray and the silver here. I like that. So Let's go I'll with make the an version. executive decision. Well, good. And yep. version three presumably is better because it's Let's three go, yes, rather than yes. two. Uh, lastly, of course, for every good practicing guitar player there, uh, looper on the end, because I'll be honest with you, at least 50% of the time that I'm playing guitar, it's just for practice. Sure. So having the looper that I can just, you know, put some stuff around. Uh, so if that could go on the board, that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. And then what I was going to do, because this is, you know, the, the best featured power supply that we uh, used to stock, or not used to stock, we currently stock, True Tone CS12, which does a whole bucket load of, I think there's 12 outputs. You can have anything okay. from 18 volts. Some of them are variable down to four volts. It's got uh, the line six weirdy stuff if I did. Anyway, um, and we use these, we've used one of these on our video show and there it is down there mm -hmm. uh, for the last couple of years and it's always worked. So, but you said, no, no, no. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe. I think what I need to do is get everything on the board because um, I, what I also want to do, you've got a, you know, this is a decent size, uh, well, a decent number of pedals for a board. One thing about having all these pedals going in and out of each other is that the signal is, of course, going through all the foot switches and all the um, patch leads. And you'll find that by the time you get to the other end of the signal chain with this, there'll definitely be a noticeable mm -hmm. difference. Um, so I might put a quartermaster on the board, which is going to put these in individual loops, um, so that you're only ever running through the pedal that you that you want to run through, mm -hmm. um, to to save on that you know that loading and that capacitance. Um, but you know we'll, we'll have a look at the power supply, and you know I've bought some other stuff. Uh, I think I just need to to jump yep. in and just see what's going to work. But this is I think uh, you know the crazy thing is as well I've not actually wired all this up yet and tried it like. All I've tried, right. you know, I've tried everything in isolation. Sure. Um, and I've tried a lot of things where I've tried, you know, like three of them together or something. Sure. But I've not actually kind of gone, ah, so I'm super excited as well. Thanks. Okay. So awesome. there we are. Yes. All right. Uh, okay. Shall we get cracking? Absolutely. All right. Well, the, my idea is I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave these two mm -hmm. out of here mm -hmm. so that you can hit the delay and, and, and obviously the loop is going to be, be off. But here, you can hit the delay in that at any time. Yeah. And then we'll have the, so basically all the drives. And, oh, no, I want the reverb after the delay. Um, if there was going to be a, a pedal that I'm highly unlikely to ever switch off, it's going to be that one. Okay. Or at least it's either going to be switched on because there's no reverb in the amp, or it's going to be switched off because there's not... reverb in the amp. Okay. All right, cool. Well, so, in that case, oh, hang on. Because that might be the one to not put in the loop. Or something. Hang on. That's all right. Plan is coming together. Oh, I'm feeling this. I am feeling it. Yeah. Do you know what that's I've realized as well? That's my one criticism about this pedal deck thing is that the gap in the middle is um, annoyingly big. Yeah. So I don't even, although I suppose in fairness, if I'm not treading on the pedals, it doesn't matter quite so much, does it? No. So this is called Pedalboard Tetris. It's a game I've developed over the years. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm confident that I can make this work. There's two, there's two schools of thoughts on this. The Robin Trower way to do it is having the vibe before the game pedals, and the Hendrix way to do it is having the vibe after the game pedals. Having the vibe before the game pedals is more subtle effect. Mm -hmm. um, it sort of becomes, if you imagine, uh, Take Eddie Van Halen, mm -hmm. right, with his Phase 90 going into his cranked Marshalls. And then you think that that same Phase 90 into a clean sound is, is 
that effect is so deep and so mm. full on. But mm. the way that um, if you have that phase 90 going into a, an app that's compressing, it's a whole different thing. It's exactly the same idea with a, a vibe, which is essentially a phaser, mm. going into a dirty stage. The vibe becomes less pronounced. Given that there's a blend control on the Univibe and I can kind of set it to taste. Okay. Is it say I think I feel like I'd rather have the guitar going into the drive pedal to get the sort yeah, of yeah. that and, and, then, and then blend it and as then much blend as you like. Or as much as I like. So I think and, and if it was good enough for Jimmy, then it's there you, good okay. for me. But what I want to do, and this is the way I do all my boards, is once I've got it set up and a vague idea of where I want things to go. So your output will be the output from the looper? Yep. Yep. Which will always be... Uh, so that'll be outside yeah. outside the quartermaster, so you can kick that on whenever you want. Yeah. Um, and the same idea with the reverb. Yeah. So, so let me just understand. So the, if I'm totally honest with you, and this is showing my naivety here, I always, I never quite... I always thought the quartermaster mm -hmm. was just an utterly sort of elaborate lazy way of just going i don't want the pedals over here i want the pedals here right and i never really saw beyond that but what you're saying is it's although that's part of the attraction yep. or something like this yep. it's absolutely more to do with the fact that when the guitar is actually going through this pedal board mm -hmm. and i'm not using six or seven of the pedals i'm getting the cleanest shortest un exactly so if you think about it sound. if you think right. about two things um, all of all foot switches aren't created equal. All bypass states and pedals are not created equal. Okay, political here, are so, we? So, well, no, it's 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 you know, I'm, I'm sure these are all great. The only thing is that if you consider that you've got, you know, cable in and out, in and out, yeah, in and yeah, out of yeah. all these. So by the time that you've gone in and then through yeah. and then out, it's you're adding load and capacitance from all those different stages, as opposed to in and out. Here, I've, so that, I've never actually seen one of these in the flesh, and I must admit, this is the uh, this is the OC, not OC, what's your, this is the sort of the, the the man bit in me that just goes, oh, it feels <laughs> nice, you know, it's like <laughs> it's like I just feel it's like really nicely done, and it's got nice knobs and switches on it. Yeah, really so like the it. the uh, <laughs> hey, they're not just nice knobs, are they, Dan? No, they're not, they're not just nice knobs. So these uh, our foot switches are optical. Right. Um, these are the full switches are actually milled um, from stainless steel, and uh, so we use uh, light to control relays. But you can drive a tank over those; it'll basically yeah. never never wear out. And another another thing is because you're not actually jumping up and down with the foot switches here, it saves the, the pedal. Mm. You know, you let this do the work. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's you know it's it's designed to give you the shortest possible signal path with the least amount of loading for your signal. So that basically when you turn a loop on, only the pedal that is in that loop is activated. Now this, your quartermaster as mm -hmm. opposed to G2, yep. is, this, um, is this also programmable in that in the, could I say like if I press number five it activates a, or is it only um, like a, a combination of loops or this, is it just... So, this isn't programmable, right. this is just, these simply control the loops they're associated with. Yep. On the back of this there are little buttons here and this is controls what we call the flip-flop state so right. if you have let's say you've got um, three overdrives here and that you never stack them well then I can put the buttons in here and it'll I'll turn that one on and if I turn that one on it'll turn that one off right right so you can just flip-flop between yeah. them yeah and in, you know in, in a really simple rig it's really handy just mm -hmm. taking out one extra yeah press um, but you know we've purposely kept it as yeah. simple as we can uh, as bulletproof as we can. Um, so if I, if I, not that I do, but it, but if for whatever reason, or if anybody's watching this and they're thinking, I would also like the uh, the functionality to, to program up combinations of these and do thing. heaps more. That's your G2, that's G2. right? Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, so you're happy with that layout? Yeah. So I mean, that was so, I think we said, I, I need to get to this button. So yep. I could do tap tempo. Yep. I need to get to that button this to, button. To do the boost. Or it really potentially either of these because, yeah, the, these aren't controllable uh, independently from sure. the quartermaster. Uh, and I think we've said, what well, we've got six loops, so we're going to leave the supermoon out of the quartermaster uh, because, uh, exactly. and the ditto because yeah. I said to Dan, the supermoon, to be honest with you, if the amp's got reverb, 
I'm going to make a decision at the beginning yep. to go, uh, which one do I prefer, one sure. or the other? And if the amp hasn't got, this is just always going to be on. I'm never going to. I'm that guy, you know, from my videos. I always have too much reverb and I never turn it off. Obviously, we'll race through um, what you guys see of Dan building the board here because he's effectively repetitively doing the same thing over and over again. Um, how are we sticking pedals to the board, Dan? I think, so what I've done, I've, I've used a thing we call pedal board tape to stick the quartermaster to the board, but I will put Velcro on the rest of the board. Mm -hmm. I'll, put, I'll put loop Velcro on the rest of the board and I'll put pedal board tape onto the bottom of the pedals. And what that means is you're not going to um, pull the Velcro off when you go to move a pedal. Uh, you'll be able to move things around, but it'll be it'll still be nice and secure. So, so, so can I? So, when you buy a, a pedal train board, I don't even know if this is the same or a pedal deck board. You get this is just conventional Velcro, right? Yeah, it's conventional yeah. Velcro, and so, that's fine. So, right, the fluffy stuff is the mm -hmm. loop side, right, and the plastic stuff is the hook side. Mm -hmm. The most important thing with this is that you're not. Um, if you just cut out the hook side and the Velcro like mm -hmm. that, and then take that and stick it on the board, um, when you go to move the pedal, you're going to rip all the Velcro off the board as well. So the, oh, the, so the sticky bit's not strong, adhesive enough to stick to the... Well, it is, but what you need to do is you put that entire length of Velcro across here. Right. And what happens is... The, the sticky side here then has purchased so when yeah. you when you go to pull this off here yeah. it's the velcro on either side of that that's holding it down yeah so we, you know we put the velcro okay. all across here well, that makes sense yeah. that makes sense and you but you used something different to put the quarter so, master on didn't you was yes. it like a sort of a more plastic heavier duty version of, yeah so uh, this velcro. is um this is what we call pedal board tape and it's if you look at that they're like little mushrooms and you put it's the same side that goes on both sides oh, i see so it clips on together yeah 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 but it's it's very strong. So it's stronger than the normal Velcro. Very, yeah, much yeah. stronger. Okay. But the glue is much stronger as well. So what we end up doing is, if I can grab that Velcro from you again. So if we put the hook side mm -hmm. on the board and we use this on the pedals, it's it sits nice and firm, but without you can actually pull it off without too much okay. drama. So it's easier almost to pull off than... than all right. Yeah. And um, what do you, is this a where would if somebody decides because if you buy a, a I'm pretty sure if you buy any pedal board from a, a music retailer you're going to get more conventional Velcro. Sure. So where would you buy this from? Uh, I mean we have it uh, at the Gigri store. I'm sure we can furnish you with. Oh, just, but could you get it from a, a hardware store or something? No. Or not? No. Oh, no, so no. It's, it's quite specialist, is it? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's called what? Sorry. It's, it's called pedal board tape. Oh, literally called pedal board tape. Yeah. Fair yeah. Is it literally yeah, yeah. made? specifically for it's a three oh, no it's a 3m dual lock stuff but right. it was you know when we when we found it um cool you know sort of adopted it for that purpose and right. it's really yeah it's really handy we use it for if we're doing a professional touring rig for someone then we will use this on both sides mm -hmm. so that once it's locked down it's secure it's not going anywhere yeah. without you know a great deal of force um but if we're doing a board like this where you're going to change your mind and move things yeah. around then we'll use loop velcro on the bottom and this on the pedal itself. So the next thing that you are custom cutting, now again, uh, depending I suppose on what your budget is and what kind of pedals you're putting on and well, predominantly what your budget is, you, you, the, the most cost effective way to go and buy patch cables is to go to your local music retailer and they'll probably have a tub of patch cables and some will be mega cheap, like £1.50 each or something and look a bit cheap. And they'll be equally, there are brands that do pre-made good quality patch cables you can spend six or seven pounds on a patch cable if you want but you sir for ultimate neat and tidiness mm -hmm. are cutting them to specific length yes and using evidence audio cables which mm -hmm. i think anderton sells mm -hmm. pretty sure we do pardon you sir uh and uh <laughs> and then you you cut this to whatever length you want it to be yep uh it's actually you know it's much more malleable Malleable, pliable, whatever you call it. You know, look, you, you know, there they are. Look, I made a little, made a little funny moustache for a Frenchman. <laughs> Hello, um, and uh, and uh, so that's kind of cool. And then you screw in. Oh, yeah. So let me show you how this is done. Um, 
The reason I really... I am a bit French, so I'm allowed to mock Are my... You? Uh, yes, my grandmother is French, my mother lives in France. Wow. France, I can't even say it, that's how French I am. <laughs> Allez les bleus. Uh, and therefore, when England go out the World Cup and France normally go on to win it, I can kind of semi-celebrate my second team. Very good. There seems to be a French seal on your T-shirt as well there, I see. <laughs> Anybody uh, that wants to try and work out uh, this T-shirt, if they think it's fun, you can buy these from Anderton's. Dot co dot UK. Thank you, Mick, for the merch plug. <laughs> You're a very experienced merch plugger. <laughs> so, this is alive. <laughs> yeah. so, so what I'm doing here, I'm stripping back the first layer of insulation, taking the um, the copper braid and just wrapping it around, si around the outside. All of the um, solderless cables that you can buy will all have the next uh, sort of core, you know, core mm -hmm. area and wrapped by this black insulation. It's really important that no matter what cables you're using, you get rid of that black insulation. Um, they use carbon to make that plastic black, mm -hmm. and carbon is, of course, very conductive. So a lot of people, when they make their own cables, and they don't get rid of that black car um, insulation around the outside, mm. find that they get shorted cables right. because that's what they're going against. Anyway. Um, the idea with these ones is that the core is solid copper. Yep. Right? I'll keep yep. that really... So it's not a braided... Uh, exactly. Uh, and inside this plug here is a threaded section that threads straight into the tip. Yeah, I see. Right? Yeah. Now, when I thread this on here, that center core yeah. will thread straight into the tip. Now... It's like when you, if on you, your Sky, if you've got Sky TV on your satellites, the same thing that exactly. goes on. And, so if you grab that... So, Oh yeah, we, right. so, so it's on already right. before you've it's even on already. put the other end on. The other, and, you, and the thing the is, bit. that is threaded now directly into, into the tip. Yeah. I know that that is a solid connection. Yeah. Um, and, and it's nice and bendable. Nice and bendable. So we do it because I think, so when you're buying patch cables from Andertons, you've got the choice of either going down the most affordable route, which is to buy the, the pre-made ones. They're pre-length. Normally you get them like a foot long or two foot long or something like that. Um, and you can, some will have right angled jacks and some won't, whatever. And as I said, there's a, there are some cheap ones of those and there's some decent ones of those. The cheapest cable kit that we do where you buy like a length of cable and then you screw the jacks on is the Planet Waves one, mm -hmm. which I think you were saying you've probably got to be a bit, just make double, triple sure that you've got a good solid yeah, uh, join. And with then, those ones, you need to you know test them, grab a multimeter yeah. and test them, make sure that they're all working. But, but these evidence audio ones appear to be your cable of choice. It's really weird, you see. I, in my brain, I always associate like thicker cable with being better, and these are really thin cable. Yeah. So is that like? Am I just? Well, it's thin, but the the core is solid. Yes. So, it yeah, it, it works great. So just because it's thin cable, because the George Bell's cables were always thin, weren't they? And I always just think they look a bit cheap. Yeah, but, it's um, not, see, it's not about... It's not about the thickness, It's not ladies. about, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's about it's, the connection. It's not about the thickness, that's it's right. about the connection. That's right, that's what, right. It's what you do with it. The, it's about the relationship between the core and yeah. the outside and how thick it is. In actual fact, if that core was really thin like hair diameter mm -hmm. you'd have less capacitance in the cable mm -hmm. um but you know not that that's necessarily well, you need this bit first no this is the bit that goes on here and i screw that on bend that over pop that on here you didn't do the pull thing you didn't do the pull i did thing. the pull thing originally you did. Okay. Did you, yeah you we pulled oh i see because that's what i normally do when i'm putting like a, a new thing on the end of my garden hose or whatever is i put the thing on and then realize i've not put the collar on the hose and i've got to take the whole thing off again and put the collar on again but i didn't i, I didn't that was kind of crazy there we are so look right so there we go
got to, I've got to say here, if you've got a gig rig generator um, and you've got a pedal deck, pedal board, it honestly could not have been made any better, um, utterly by accident, but it completely, I don't know, you, let me just tip this up like this. See what Dan's done with the, it's just where, it's to the millimeter perfect fit. Check that out. I'm loving it. Leonardo da Vinci of pedal boards has finished. <laughs> Look at this. Let's tip it up so that we can see. I've not actually seen the other side yet. Oh, this is like the, it's when the when the bottom's as glorious as the top. Come on then. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Oh man, that's tremendous. I mean, do you know, with it, Dan has worked so hard for this. The overhead cameras run out of battery, so we we we, we can't show you overhead cam. Wow. We can only show you front cam. Oh so, man. Got a little, the last thing I gotta do, I just label this up quickly, but that'll he's take doing me a second. It. He's doing it, he's labeling it and everything. Right. <gasps> oh look, even the color of the LEDs is good. Yeah man. Why is this one red? Or right, is that an option? So, no, the, so the red here, you've got a, this little oh, push button little here. Flip -flop so if I put flip flop, on this side, put flip -flop so I don't want three. any flip flop. No, no. But if you did flip flop, <gasps> and then you could add these to the flip flop, and then turn them off. So Daniel Steinhardt. <laughs> just... Okay. <sighs> okay. So there's your there's your reverb. So that's the number one is the vertex, right? So that is on now. That is on. So it works. It's so good. I, it's been in the cat. He's made them for years, but. Sorry, is it that for us? Too much. Is it? 
Do these pedals sound better than they normally would because of the Quartermaster? Yes! <laughs> They sound fatter. Uh, and it's because Why? of the power. It's, because it's the power. The power as well makes a difference. You're totally right, I've got way too much room. No, 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 you need more. <laughs> some tones out of this which I'm afraid to say ladies and gentlemen is gonna to have to be in another video yes because got, we have homes to go to we do I've children got one, to see one last quick thing to do oh, and I'll on. face this I'll turn this around so everyone can see let me just it's just Stella I should also say as well during the course of the afternoon one of the things that Dan and I have agreed uh, is that Andertons will be stocking and selling gig rig products. <laughs> so, well, um, yes, uh, so uh, all was not lost, uh, uh, Dan. So uh, congratulations on, um, yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. These are, mm, it, that, that, that's a difficult one that is. I mean, again, that, that, that reaction yeah. that I had at the end there is, uh, took me a little bit by surprise i genuinely wasn't expecting to go and it, uh, mick has said this many times it, it, that uh until you physically just hear like the before and after probably with your own pedals yeah and it is a mix of i guess great power supplies great cables what's going on in the quartermaster mm -hmm. the magic fairy dust that you've obviously sprinkled over it um it brings things to life in, in a way that, I mean, it, there was a good, probably, probably would have been a great sounding board anyway. Yeah, yeah. But it's just like, like a bit greater. And it's that, it's that extra, yes, extra 2%. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. for me, that makes all the difference. But you, it is something you experience. Yeah. And Well, look, Pete and I are going to do another video soon, or at some point before Crimbo anyway, where he'll get his G2 board out. I'll fiddle around with this and we'll do a bit more of an explanation of what's going on on all of the boards. But look, man, yes! <laughs> I can't thank you enough. It's been, mate, I... And I know you've driven miles and miles to come up here as well, so appreciate well, look, it. And I'm, it's going to be a late night for you, you know, so I think well I, done. As, I, as I mentioned in the video we did with Mick, you know, we're so grateful to you 
um, for all the encouragement and stuff that you give to us. So it's been an honor to do this for you today. It really has been. Man hug. Aww. Well done, man. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Bye, everyone. Bye.